let's see by who they do target in the portal, what the coaching staff is telling us, you know, now some of the, some of what the staff is telling you when they go after somebody is that they already know some of their own are going to be entering the portal. And that's another thing we have to look at. We always look at it from the standpoint of who's on your roster that we can steal. Cause we're kicking ass and you're not like, Every year, poor South Carolina lines up in the fetal position when December rolls around. I mean, they're, they're just in the shower trying to get clean. They're about to get abused again every year. You're like, oh, what? Well, you know what? He's a good player, wasting his time with your sorry ass program. Come on down. We'll take him too. So I, there's some teams that just know uh, we're about to get raided. And Florida State's done such a good job of it. But because Florida State's done such a good job, and this year is backing it up with an elite recruiting class. The writing will be on the wall for many players on this roster as well. Agreed. I, I just think if you have a set amount of resources, let's call it a budget, if you will. Yeah. If you have a budget for this particular offseason, I think long-term needs are more important Correct. than short-term needs, except in the scenario by which a Keon Coleman, like you're talking, becomes about, available. Name the position, whatever the position is. But if you have that type of an impact player, yeah, you better listen. You'd be doing your program a disservice to mm-hmm. not and to not make a competitive offer. But this year, the stars were aligning properly in terms of retention, what was going on around you at different programs. I think it's time to turn the keys over a little bit to the homegrown guys, to the high school guys. Like, for example, it's going to suck to not have a Keem Dent next year. I'm willing to let KJ Bolden try as a true freshman to see how he can do. Yeah. I don't know that I need to go get a rental right. one year you, you safety. You went and got a five star. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I you agree. got Shaheem. He's in year three. Okay, that's one half of the equation. I know you like to rotate three and four guys. You got Conrad Hussey. A lot of exposure this year. We'll see what he develops into. But I don't need to go get a free agent. I've got KJ Bolden. Let's sink or swim with the five star that we stole away from Georgia, please. Because you don't want to piss off those kids. You know, year after year, if you're coming in with a high-level safety or a corner or a receiver, you don't necessarily have to bring in somebody at that position every year because now those four- and five-star kids, they want to be here less. Mm -hmm. So you got to turn the keys over to them a little bit soon. There will – I've decided that for other than linebacker where, you know, I feel like we need to find some reinforcements with with the quickness. Like, I feel like we're kind of in a desperate situation at linebacker right now. And so if there's a stud out there that you can go bring in and you feel really good about, then, you know, I I would make a a press for that. But short of that, I'm fine with riding with this receiving core because I think Hakeem's going to be a star. And I think Mandravius Jacobs has a chance. If he can keep his head on straight and mature, he can be an elite player. Obviously, Destin Hill's got blazing speed and real superstar potential. You've got some guys coming back that can take a step forward as well. You're not going to have all your tight ends back. Morlock will be back, though. He'll continue to progress. Also, God forbid, Jeremiah Smith comes this way. Well, that's a game-changing moment. Don't need to get a key on Coleman if a Jeremiah Smith is rolling in. That is correct. That's a game-changing moment. But so what what am I alluding to? Well, I look, I'm willing to take some chances. If you want to say to me, hey, look, what can you really expect? Let's say Brock Glenn is going to win the job. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But let's say... Brock is going to be your quarterback and you say, well, what is your ceiling with a redshirt freshman? Well, I mean, they're redshirt freshmen that have done really well before. One of them's name is James Winston, but I'm not saying Brock Glenn is James Winston. I, I what I'm saying is that you, you don't, by default, you're not going to lose five games. Other players around him can make him better. It's just that you had a superstar play the position this year who happened to be your best player that you retained at the most important position. Not that's not common. That doesn't happen every year. So, you know, you'll just run the offense a little bit differently, but Brock has got a ton of moxie to say the least. And he's a big, strong kid. And I think he'll be, if he wins the job, he'll be an admirable performer, maybe even a plus player in year one as a starter. But what you do have to do, no matter what you think of the youth of the skill positions and the inexperience at certain other positions, you'd better, if you're going to win nine to 10 games and put yourself in that 12 team playoff or have a chance at it anyhow, and have a chance to run it back for the ACC title, you'd better secure the offense and defensive lines. And that's all I'm really looking at. I'm starting with the, obviously I'd like to find a linebacker, but I don't know what the total is. Five players, six players, four players. Don't know what the total is for the portal this year, what they're looking at, but buddy, 75% of what I'm looking at is the offensive and defensive line. 
yeah, this is maybe more opinion than smart in some ways. Um, because if if you find a game changer again at this position, then you got to listen and maybe make an offer. I hope they don't go get a, a quarterback in the portal. No, I hope they don't. I mean, it, it would have to be a bona fide. Yeah, like okay, KJ Jefferson went in the portal today, and, yeah. but then he went back on social said I haven't made my decision yet. Right, nice way to get more phone calls to come your way through back channels there. Um, if that's a kid that's available, maybe I don't know many other options because you know there's a lot of speculation that Riley Leonard would enter the portal. Uh, what? Why? I think you've got a player that's equivalent to him or better right here on the roster right now in Brock Glenn. Well, we don't know that. We think Brock Glenn is going to be that. I don't need yeah. a one-year rental to upset the apple cart in the order of things in the quarterback room for yeah. a guy who's coming off of an ankle injury That's, and isn't yeah. exactly – I mean, he doesn't light the world on fire. He's a good runner. Well, don't listen, get me wrong. Very we, good runner. We but. talked about this before. I was saying this in, in response to a question we got on the show two weeks ago, and I, and I said I thought definitively that Florida State – Barring a can't miss at quarterback, wouldn't even entertain the idea. The quarterbacks that are out there so far in in the portal right now, and you mentioned one of them that would maybe raise an eyebrow. But outside of that, yeah, what are you gonna go get? Will Rogers from Mississippi State? Sorry, ass. You're gonna go get Ward at Washington. Blake Shapen. Well, okay, that's an interesting thought. Nice player. Uh, you know, He's you're gonna a nice go player, but again, like, what's you're gonna go get? Brendan Soresby from Indiana. You're gonna get. Catton Hauser, you know, I mean, what, Max Johnson, who I wanted a couple of years ago, but don't want now. No, it's above replacement level. Like, where can you improve the most? Mm -hmm. I think at quarterback, even if you were to get the kid from Washington State or Leonard from Duke, I think it's a marginal improvement. But if you can go get yourself a tackle, which is uh, everybody's looking for, or or a linebacker, or another corner, no linebacker, or keen maybe a center who linebacker. can actually play center. We tried two years in a row, Man, and it didn't work out. Most of those guys are homegrown from the high school ranks that you bring in as four and five star kids and build them up, get them in the system, let them play as junior. Maybe a pure H back, like a blocking back type. I mean, I think there's more value in other places. I think you're pretty, you're in a decent spot here at quarterback that. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. There's not a it. lot of dudes that you would break the bank for or ruin the chemistry of the quarterback room for. At this I, point. I'm, and I agree with that because I also think that while we went 12 and 0 this year, and I'd like to sustain that, although that is irrational, at least for now, to say that you're going to have what? You're going to go 10 and 3, 12 and 0, 12 and 0? Probably not. Uh, be nice. Be cool. We're striving to get to a place where that's a reasonable expectation, even. But until we're at that place with the quality depth that is required, you, you can't look at the upcoming season as a step back if they don't remain undefeated, right? So to me, what are you what what is your goal next year? Well, your goal is to compete to win the ACC. And if you do that, you got a good chance to make the college football playoff. Now, I don't believe they'll go into next year. No coach would ever admit this, and no player thinks this way, but observing it from what they're losing, the personnel that they're going to lose, and the influx of talent, most of which is very young, I would tell you that is it's highly unlikely that you're playing for a, a national title. I mean, you're not. That's the other thing. Is for, But we want to be a five seed to an eight seed so we can host the playoff game. That is, <laughs> that is the humongous goal next year. That's Tom's big goal, everybody. It is. I want to host a playoff game. But there are different kinds of transfers, too. There are grad transfers, multi -year transfers. and multi-year transfers. Yeah. We yeah. want the multi-year coming. Oh, yeah. Find me the stud linebacker who's sideline to sideline and is a little bit crazy. I feel uncomfortable with him when I'm in the same room, but has three years to play. Sure. Like, in a sense, Keon Coleman would be nice if he had a clone that you could go get him again this offseason. But really, if you're only going to get one season out of him, would you break the bank and use the budget on a player that what's it going to do for you? No, get you build, from nine to 10? No, you're building it back up. You, again, yeah. you, you've got to find a superstar that you would say, okay, I didn't expect to spend here, but we got a chance at, and the guy you name is, uh, uh, is on the lips of uh, every college football fan in America. Like, oh, they're right. going to grab that guy. Huh? That kid calls Mike because he wants to play Mike's offense. And there yeah. is a very distinct possibility. Those calls are happening.